Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Bray. I'm a formerly an all-American gymnast and a current gymnastics coach and judge. This video, we're gonna be breaking down Michaela Maroney's legendary 2012 Olympic team final vault where she did a Yurichinko Aminar, Aminar, I don't know if I'm saying that right. I've always heard it be called an Aminar, but it could be Aminar. So my apologies if that is wrong. But besides the point, she does one of the best Yurichinko Aminars I've ever seen in my life. And in my opinion, it is the best Aminar to ever have been done by both men and women. And dare I say, better than Simone Biles. Yeah, I said it. Don't come for me, don't come for me. It's just my opinion. That's my opinion! But if you guys would like me to do a side-by-side -side video comparing Simone's Almanar and Michaela's Almanar, comment that down below and I will absolutely do that. But for this video specifically, we're just gonna stick to Michaela. Okay, let's just watch it in regular motion, okay? Let's just enjoy this because, ooh, when I watched this, I was watching this, you know, live. Like, I was 16 years old. And it was really weird because I was an elite and this was the Olympics, like, I wish I wanted to go to. Obviously, I wasn't there. No surprise. Okay, that's okay. But it was so crazy watching it because, you know, I had gone to camps with these girls, um, you know, and to see them on the biggest stage and see them at the Olympics was just so crazy and fun. And then watching this vault happen live. Oh, my God. I've that's the closest I've ever been to fainting. I, it was I was literally speechless, flabbergasted, could not believe it. Here we go. Right here. Ugh, what's that Theo Vaughn quote? Oh, make you want to kick a fat kid at Kmart. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oh, make you want to kick a fat kid at Kmart. You know what I'm saying? That vault. It's so okay. Don't get ahead of ourselves. Okay, let's just let's break it down. Okay, let's break it down. Right. If you didn't see my Simone Biles vault, you can go and check that out. I'll have it linked down below. But we're going to reiterate a bunch of the same things because it's essentially the same vault in terms of the Yurichinko part. And then the difference between Simone and her vault is Simone did the double pike afterwards and Michaela's doing a two and a half laid out twist. So the number one thing that again is super important in this vault is Michaela's run. So let's just watch that really fast lots of speed and you can see that angle at what she is running at she is leading her shoulders and making sure her leg are following quickly quickly behind not the best you know run example because you can just see her head for like half the run based off of the uh video but breaking down after she does the run you can see i mean look at her like you can tell how intense it is by her neck like her neck is like we are in this baby we are full gunning okay she is up in it. So here we go. We're going into the hurdle. Very similar to what we saw in Simone Biles' video. Where are her shoulders to her ears? Where are her legs? Everything in position. So as she pushes off, she is also a righty, same as Simone. So she's using that left leg, as you see. That's going to kind of be her little kicker, if you will. Like that's, that's her go pedal. That is what's going to help create the power because not only is all her body weight on that one leg right now, she has to then push off of right here, push off that leg into this mountain climber, which is this little position right here. And then she's again kicking that left leg over her head to create momentum. And same thing that we mentioned on the past video. Look where her eyes are. Look where her chest is. Look where her hips are. Everything is turning towards the vault table as soon as possible. You cannot do this vault slow. You cannot do this vault held back. And that's what makes this a very scary vault because you have to be 100% in it for it to be done correctly. And when you're 100% in it, it's fast, it's intense, it's a lot, so it's scary. So as she's doing that super quick and she finishes the round off, again, where are her hands and feet? They're both in the air at the same time. That wasn't really the best pausing angle. Let me try that again. So, oh, right there. So her feet and hands are going to be in the air at the same time. Why? Because she has, I mean, the hand mat is lava, right? We played the game, the floor is lava. Okay, well, the hand mat is lava. And she's putting her hands on that hand mat so quickly on and off. Because again, if she's leaving her hands down on the hand mat for too long, she's not going to get enough rotation out of the round off to start the back handspring which is not going to help her be able to do any type of flip or twist out of the vault. So it's essential that she gets on and off her hands in the round off. And this is going to equal her hands coming off the hand mat before her feet have even gotten to the board. Because if her feet are on the board 
and her hands are still on the hand mat, she's going to end up in a pike position. And that's going to be a really difficult position to pick her chest up and to be in the right position to go again, like I said, into the back handspring. So here she is <clears throat> landing now the round off, as you can see right here. Oh, this is kind of hard to pause right there. Again, she's in that stood up position. If you are watching a good Yurichinko, you're going to look at pretty similar techniques because all the techniques have to be essentially the same in order to have a successful Yurichinko vault. You've got to be on and off your hands in the round off. You've got to be stood up in the round off. You've got to have your chest in. You've got to have your eyes in the right position. You've got to have, to have enough momentum. You've got to have enough rotation, all of, all of the above, enough twist. So you're going to see her look pretty similar to Simone's techniques, and it's because they both have one of, if not the best vaults in terms of this technique and this vault in the world. And I'm comparing that to men as well. There are some men... This is what happens when you live next to a military air force base. There are some men that have beautiful high Yurichinko vaults. Do not get me wrong. Going back to the importance of the technique, here she is standing up. She's standing up perfectly straight. Her hips are open. Where are her eyes? Where are her hands? They're all looking in the position where they need to be at that moment. And that's what's super difficult about gymnastics and vaults like this. Everything happens so fast. And every single angle of every single millisecond in that vault, your body needs to be in the right position at the right time. Your eyes need to be looking at the right place at the right time. They could be looking at the correct place, but if you do it at the incorrect time, it may not work. So everything really does have to be in its place at, this, or at the correct time. And there really is a very small margin of error that can happen um, for you as a gymnast. Does that make sense? A very small margin of error, a very small marginal of error. Y'all know what I'm trying to say, right? I always mess that stuff up. But there's a very small window that an error can happen in order to still be successful in this fault. Like you, you really can't be making a, a big mistake and get away with it. It's not going to happen. So as she comes out of this Yurichinko and she hits that table right here. Well, right before she hits the table, technically. Notice this body position that she's in. It's very similar to what the vault looks like. And I tell my gymnasts too, I'm like, the vault's really just like a little cheat sheet. Look at the vault and look at your body position. You really want to be in that exact position going into the table because again, if we're leaving our feet down on the board, as long as we can going into that flick, this is what our body position is going to be. And when your body position is in that position, it's going to now allow for you to do this, for you to hit the table at this type of angle where now her hands are hitting. As soon as she hits the table... She's able to block and pop those feet up. And this is why I think hers is done better than Simone's is because Simone, again, it's very hard to compare those two because they're both so near perfect when they do that. But the only reason I feel like Michaela's is slightly a little bit better than Simone's is because Michaela starts flipping before vertical. So, and again, we can break that down if that's what you guys are wanting in a comparison video. I mean, who knows? I might look back on this video actually when I make the video and they look the exact same and I'm going to have to take back what I said and be like, never mind, they're just tied. Or actually maybe Simone's is better. But from my, my, my memory, I feel like Michaela's is better. But I hope to stand to be stood corrected because I'd love for them to both just have, you know, as equally good as Vault and not really have to be like, oh, hers is better, hers not because I don't think it's fair because they're both so phenomenal. But, you know, there always has to be a winner and a loser, I guess. I might look back on this video and be eating my words, which is totally fine with me. But anyways, as she leaves her feet down, it allows her to now pop her feet up right here. And you can see right here on the vault, this is where I think the deductions came from on this vault. I know the commentators and the girls in the video were saying she should have gone to 16.5. And honestly, when you watch it in real life, it's really hard to see these deductions. The only reason I'm even seeing these deductions is I'm literally pausing it and having it in slow motion. So I don't, I watching it in real time, I don't think I would have given it a 16.5, but I would have gone above a 16.23, whatever she got. Um, but because we are paused on it, I will, I will show right here. This is technically a deduction. This is turning early on the table and you can tell her she's turning early on the table because look where her belly button is it's, it's supposed to be going, you know, towards the mat and look where her shoulders are. You can tell that they're twisted. So she's starting to turn early, which again, can you blame her? She's got to do a two and a half twist. Like it's, it's insane, but you know, deductions are the deductions. So her twisting early is going to be a technical deduction. 
But moving on from that, as her feet come up, she immediately, look at her shoulders and her elbows, locked out. They don't even bend. And again, this is absolutely necessary. You cannot get the height you want to get on your vault if your elbows are bending. Like, it doesn't make sense. It's not going to happen. So she hits the table. Boom. She starts her twist. Look how high her feet, you, it's not even in, you can't even see them. They're not even in screen. Her feet are so high and look, her chest keeps rising and her head went higher than her feet. That is, and again, that's all because of the entry, her, her shoulders being open, tight body, all of those things. So you can see now her legs are glued together. Her body's position is perfectly straight. And look where she look what she does as she comes out of that two and a half. See her starting to open up her right arm. She's doing this to now stop the twist and the momentum. And she does it at the most perfect time. She does it when she's horizontal to the floor because she knows her momentum and physics and gravity and all of the power before is going to start coming into play for her and help her out. So when she starts opening up her arms, her momentum's just going to boom, take her right there. And look where her eyes were as she came out of it looking forward slightly down at her mat to land. She has her arms out to the side to again help her stop her momentum where she can stick it. She lands with her knees bent, very safe. Please land with your knees bent, gymnast. And as she lands, she holds on. She takes the, I mean, I don't, yeah, I, I consider that a stick. Her, she just slides her heels together. And maybe she should have held it a little bit longer if she was actually stuck, which is this is now a new NCAA rule where gymnasts have to show a controlled and like they cannot move during their salute for it to be considered stuck. This is new. Um, so that'll be interesting to see in the NCAA. But that's what makes me say she didn't really stick it, but she stuck it uh, because she didn't hold her salute. You can tell she was kind of falling forward, but she did a really good job covering it up and making it look like she had control, but I could tell she was a little out of control of it. And it could also have been she was just so excited that she just quickly saluted. That's absolutely a possibility. But from what it looks like to me, you can tell she's kind of leaning forward as she lands. As you can see it right there, her chest is kind of leaning over her toes and it seems like her momentum is still going. So she's not able to fully stick it. Anyways, as she lands, you can tell she's kind of falling a little forward, but other than that, I mean, it's an absolutely monster of a vault. And the, an, an Aminar has never been done like that again. And again, the only other person is probably Simone. Um, so I, I'm really hoping people want to see a comparison video so I can make that. But other than that, like, nobody has that good of a Yurichinko Aminar, in my opinion. I would love to see videos people can send me um, being like, I think this is a good one, boy or girl. I would love to see it because I, I, I can appreciate a good vault. But it's so fun. Ugh, fuck that bitch. Uh, it's so fun watching to the reactions because they knew it was absolutely phenomenal. And here's my second favorite part. We're going to watch it actually when, in the replay. They have the slow motion. So you're going to watch. So again, see where her eyes are. Now see where her, see how her hands and feet are in the air at the same time. Now notice how as she lands, perfectly stood up, perfectly stood up, leaning back into the table before going into it, before going into it. Look at, she's literally the, in, the, in the exact same shape as the vault. Looking into it, boom. Here's the only thing that gives. Watch her shoulders. You see that little crunch? Let me go back again. Lands, crunch, just a little bit. Lands, crunch, just a little in that shoulder. It's very, it's very minimal, but it does happen. Um, probably because her shoulders aren't made of steel, you know? But that's the only thing I can see. But you can see even there, a little bit of early twist. But again, I don't, I don't see when you're watching it in real life, like you can tell. I, I couldn't tell. So I don't, I mean, I'm sure that's something that they said that dedu they deducted, but I would, I don't know. I just, I, I didn't see it in real life and maybe that's my fault. But anyways, and look how high as she's pulling those arms up to start twisting. Now she's got to become very aerodynamic. That's why we start pulling our arms in because, again, the smaller you are in your body position, the faster you're going to twist rather than being open, which is why she ends up opening to land because she's got to open up her body to stop her momentum. So as she's pulling, the only other deduction I see is her feet are slightly crossed. That's technically a deduction too. But again, it's hard to tell that in real life or in live motion. But look how the vault's not even 
the, you can't even see the vault. You can barely see the vault. That's how high she gets. Oh, and a fun fact. I'll try to put this video up, but they did a comparison to another gymnast in these Olympics that was a male and her vault went higher than his and his vault setting was higher than hers. So if you're not understanding what that means, if her vault setting was here, her vault setting was probably on like 125, let's say. His vault setting was on 130. So his vault was technically higher than her vault. So he should have been flipping higher than her given his vault was higher, but that's not what happened. Even though her vault was lower, she still vaulted higher than him with her vault lower. Like that's insane. Like I just, I really hope people are grasping how insane that is. And I'll, I'll try to put the comparison video right here. Laura, the men's all -around gold medalist. And look at this, the exact same vault. And yes, Michaela is about a foot and a half, two feet higher. Unbelievably, and the landing position, you can see the exact height difference right here. Look at how high Michaela So as you can see, that is absolutely insane. But moving on, finishing up her vault. She sees the landing. There she is at that horizontal position. Now she's starting to open up her arms, bringing them out. Sees the landing. Probably a little surprised, but she will take it. I mean, she shouldn't be surprised. Her vaults look like that like all the time. But every time you stick, you're kind of like, oh, I stuck it. Yay. <laughs> you know, and so you can tell a little bit. You see how she never stops moving. She keeps going. Now, this is my favorite part. They didn't show it very well. You could see it for a second. Look at this judge's face. She said, her jaw dropped. It dropped to the flow. Mine would too. I would have fell out my chair. I would have been like, would have been totally inappropriate for me to do as a judge. But come on, you are witnessing history being made by Michaela Maroney right now. Like, I'm going to give it a little clap. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely stunning. All right, guys, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Comment down below something that you learned, something that you looked were looking more um, into. And let me know if you guys want me to do that comparison video. Um, like I said, this is, you know, an amazing vault. And I just, I really like doing these videos because I think it really gets people to understand how hard our sport is, what's all required, but it educates them too. You know, people know football, pretty well, but people don't really know gymnastics. And I think with gymnastics gaining popularity, uh, it's important to know kind of what you're watching because it just gives you even more respect for the sport that you are watching. And I hope this also uh, makes people want to watch more boys gymnastics. They are really struggling in terms of, um, you know, views or programs and things being cut. Yes, there's things being added because things are being cut, but I do wish boys gymnastics was getting um, a little bit more love and appreciation like the women's are. Um, obviously I'm very grateful for the women's being appreciated, but I wish the men were too, because they are just as phenomenal and they do very, very, very difficult things. So like I said, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. I'll keep making these. I think it's great for all of us to see and learn. It helps me be a better coach and a better judge, and it helps educate people too, who don't really know what the heck is going on in gymnastics. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more like this, share this. Thank you so much for supporting me on my page and I'll see you guys on my next one. Bye.